hello, hello. What it is like? Okay. It looks like everything should be okay. Hello, hello. Oops. Double sound. Okay. So something should be happening right now. So uh. Okay, so I will be speaking and I will need the the reaction, the feedback. I mean, do you see the video? Push the buttons, refresh the pages, come on, do something. I uh, this technical stuff. Okay, so do you guys see me? Do you hear me? Okay. So let's make the sound check. Everybody who can hear me at the moment, uh, please put the yes in the box. Okay. Okay. We are waiting for more reactions. With me. Yes. Okay, so it looks like everything is working, but if there is a problem, so please uh, give us let us know immediately. So I'm welcoming everybody. And today we are talking about writing skills. And uh, we have this title, like, make your writing work for you. So what I want to do for you today, I want to give you the practical tools. So that's why it, it, it is going to be very active. And I need the live communication. I need to uh, I need everybody to be very very active okay so it looks like this sound is okay and everybody can see me and Kostya hello Masha hello Marina hello Polina hello it's so nice to, to say uh, the names Sonia Sereja okay uh, so first of all uh, please tell me where are you from and uh what is your native language it's funny because we are expecting some foreigners so it will be some typing today during the session it is a practical one so just uh, give me some information about yourselves where are you from and what is your native language Okay, so of course you could say Polish, yeah, it would be, okay. Okay, so the trick is, uh, from what I see and uh, from the list I see, uh, we, uh, we are mostly Russian speakers, so if no foreigners come so uh, maybe if something is unclear i will be switching to russian but the idea is not to do that uh so uh the webinar is entirely in english because there is this superstition for people that uh you need to be very very high level uh to write effectively in english or even to speak effectively yeah uh, i don't believe that and i will be telling you about how it works and actually, you don't need like the highest level possible or you don't need to learn the grammar book by heart to be effective in writing. So people, from what you do, do you right now uh, do any kind of writing in English? Do you write letters? Do you write blogs? Uh, do you write uh, articles or something like that? So what kind of, uh, uh, first of all, who writes in English? No, Ilya, hello, Siroja, hello. So people are coming. It's so nice to see everybody. Okay. Masha, what do you write? What kind of writing do you do for your everyday practice? Okay.
Okay, emails, uh-huh, okay. So letters, yeah, and uh, emails, it is a special uh, type, yes, it is a, a special type of communication, which, of course, have their own rules, okay? Oh my, okay, blog, letters, articles, answers, okay, great. Uh, anybody else about writing? Okay, reviews. But do you mean the websites uh, of uh, reviews? Uh, what kind of of reviews? Well, by the way, if you need to write uh, the tasks for your English teacher, it will also count, yeah? So any kind of writing you do. Home tasks, of course, yes. Okay. Okay. So we are talking about blog posts, we are talking about emails, yes, we are talking about uh, uh, articles. So uh, we are, uh, we, we will be covering the principle or principles of writing in general. I know that the, uh, the uh, writing letters is a big pain for everybody. Letters, no, uh, in our current situation, it is emails. And I'm planning to talk about that uh, in the future webinars because letters, it's, it's, it's this special type. Uh, my objective here today is to cover the main pains. Yes, like what is the most, uh, what are the general principles which you can apply everywhere, okay? So now, what is your biggest pain about writing? I mean, what feels difficult? So, why are you here? Yep. So I guess it, it will take some writing, so, but it's very important to understand the objectives. Okay, so when we are talking about native structures, if I understand correctly, we want to uh, write like natives, yes? Okay, uh, uh, and sometimes it doesn't feel natural yet yeah, because it looks very Russian when we talk about the text. Well, this is very popular one, thank you, Kostya, so to start, yeah? Well, I have this uh, from time to time, so just sitting. Uh, in front of the page and I don't know what to start with and like yeah what is the topic and so on and uh, uh, yeah like we will talk about that okay so we will talk about how to start today and we will talk about uh, these structures but this uh, problem Masha tells us about uh, uh, about like translating directly uh, translating directly not from Russian so I will cover why it happens and why it is difficult so in brief but of course uh, we require some special practice for this uh, okay uh, and Okay, how to end, yeah, how to start and how to uh, end. So we know what to say, but we don't know, uh, uh, we don't know, uh, yes, how to win it up. So people, uh, for those who are listening to us, for, for those who hear us, but uh, you, if you don't know where to write, so please go to our webinar page. So it is the first link in the last letter which you received just the, uh, just before the beginning of the webinar, okay? So 15 minutes before uh, the start, I sent you the letter and there was this first link. And when you enter, you see this uh, uh, window and you see the chat below the window. So it is like this uh, uh, blue one, so live Q and A. Okay, so how to start, how to end, how to sound, 
correctly when we write. So this is what we are talking about today. And uh, we will start uh, with a little bit of explanation why it is so hard for us. So right now I'm going to do a very technically sophisticated thing. I want to share my screen with you. So I hope that everything will go OK, because I am worried about the presentation the most. So please tell me uh, if you now can see my presentation on the screen. So I am learning, and I promise to learn, and I promise that uh, technically it will be all going better and better from time to time. So can you see my presentation uh, in the video broadcast? Okay, okay, okay. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, in this case, I can start talking. So first of all, uh, if uh, somebody has forgotten who I am, so my name is Daria Starajilova, and I'm an English teacher for business and IT professionals. So lately, I've been uh, uh, working a lot with solely business yeah. projects, and we talk about business communication. So uh, we uh, learn how to we learn uh, how to uh, write in business activity okay so and the IT projects we do so it's uh, startups uh, uh, and it's uh, freelancers yeah who work uh, in IT and business so my main objective it is really communication and uh, I choose this approach of practicality yeah so we want to be relevant and we want to uh, to teach you how to do things like fast and I hope I am doing well, and uh, my current students who are listening to me, I hope you are satisfied with our practical approach. So, uh, what uh, the first question which we are asking ourselves, yeah, why is writing hard? So, what are we missing, and how it works for us? So, the problem is that we have the wrong approach from the very beginning. So, for us, it should all be happening automatically, but it doesn't work like that. Uh, so, in general, perfectly, how the languages are learned. So, uh, I learned. So, the first thing which we are supposed to start doing, we should start with practice and we should start with speaking. So, firstly, we uh, learn to speak, so we gain some practical skill of using the language. Then, in the process of speaking, and these processes are interconnected, as you can see from uh, my, uh, from my, I don't know how to say diagram, yeah? So, uh, the second thing we do, and together with speaking, it is listening and reading. So, listening and reading, as you can see, they are helping us collect the information based on our physical skill of speaking, okay? So, when we know how to do something already. We start collecting the words, we start collecting the grammar, uh, like grammar as examples, yeah, from listening and from reading, and then we move, yes, like from this, uh, like practical skill plus information, we move to, to the writing skill. So, and now, think about your own experience of learning the language. Were you moving in that direction? I mean, how did you start? with your language. And so, uh, I will uh, allow myself to answer this question for you. So, we all started with reading, okay? Then we moved to some writing, if we were lucky. We uh, also had some listening, and some way in the process we were trying, okay, yes, of course, Mash, uh, we were trying to, to learn how to speak. Okay, so what we have right now, what we have in our minds, in our brains, we have a lot of information we read, we have a lot of information, if we are lucky, <laughs> we heard, and mostly the physical skill of speaking and writing we are forming in the process. So this is the reason why you feel uncomfortable when you do it, yeah? So this is partly the reason why you are afraid to start. This is partly the reason why you are afraid to be irrelevant or in, in, in informative or something like that. So the things which are like colored yellow on my screen, so writing and speaking, they are skills which need to be trained. It's very important that you 
train your skills. So functions which you implement with your activity, it is the most important thing. It doesn't matter how many words you know, if you don't know how to put them together. It doesn't matter, uh, I don't know, like if you know all the grammar, you should do the physical thing. So I will be banal here uh, if I say, yes, to be able to write, you should write. Yeah, it's very, very easy. But yes, to be able to speak, you should speak. To be able to write, you should write. You start with small functional things, but you do it in small portions on a regular basis to form the muscular yeah if you understand like uh, to form this physical skill okay so how do the language works and it is very important and a lot of people actually don't know about that so you all think vocabulary and grammar no functions first so you see the first function on the left side what is the function how to ask how to persuade how to criticize i'm sorry yeah like you you need to be how to express your emotion how to structure your text and so on and so on so this principle is true for both productive skills it is true for both speaking and writing so you need to know your functions what can you do in the language okay so right now Try to think, and we are talking about writing now, yeah? Give me this. So what can you do in the language? In English, in writing. For example, I can tell people about my emotions. I can, uh, I don't know, send information about something. I can give statistics. I can express anger, any kind of, like, give me the physical function. What can you do? And I don't know if it's like the broadcast being a little bit late, or you are you are all thinking about the answer. Because I know the question is tricky. Okay. Okay, if you don't know what to say, write, uh, send me a message that you don't know what to say. Or I will think that I have lost you. Okay. Okay, in writing, Sirosha, yes? I haven't uh, seen so much of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you uh, if you are getting some ideas in the process early, of course, write to, to that because, I, uh, okay, yeah, and this is the honest answer, Kostya, thank you very much. So don't really know. We don't often know just because we are not uh, trained to do that. And now, unfortunately, guys, if, uh, like, you are adults and you are not at school anymore, yeah, like, you will have to learn how to do that yourself. So the next thing. So you said to me at the beginning, sometimes I have to write emails, sometimes I have to write the blog posts, okay? So, uh, well, <laughs> okay. So, so uh, what right now, think about the thing you need to write and what do you need to do? 
for that. I mean, if you are writing a letter, yeah, an email, okay, what kind of function you will be performing in that letter? And so it's uh, about your own practice, yeah? Because I know some of you, but I don't know uh, what other people do. What kind of tasks? you need to be implementing with your writing. Okay, very good. Okay, so, but I want you to be precise, much. what you want. So, for example, when you are writing a blog, a blog post, yes, you want uh, to tell people some idea. This is the function which you are doing, yeah? I see Lena uh, in the chat, so Lena, hi. Uh, so, for example, she writes scientific articles, yes? So, she presents the results of her research, okay? Describing different situations, it's very good. Description, yeah, so because Sonia writes a blog in English and so on and so on. Okay, so I will wait for a minute for more answers because I'm really, I'm, I'm very like curious about this point. It is very important. What kind of tasks you need to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what tasks do you do with this email, Siroz? And yeah, it's, it's actually very sad that I can see people who are just watching and not writing, like, because I would be helping you more if you were commenting. But oh, of course, it's totally up to you. But I see, yeah, we have some people uh, uh, who are just listening. Okay, uh, you can use this information, but uh, any kind of practical training would be helpful too. Okay, so this is the question which you ask yourself all the time. And I am giving you different functions which we can use, uh, uh, which we can use uh, uh, for our writing. Yeah, so being relevant for the reading, where, uh, for the reader, when you are writing a, an article or a blog post, you want to answer their question, okay? So this is the relevance of you for the for the reader okay if you are writing a business email because lena is writing about business communication yeah so you want to i don't know you want to give them some data and so on and so on so uh, functionally your writing should be very good mm, about the objective about the task okay very good yes yeah, so I, I i think now you uh, you get the idea so generally this is the question you ask yourself all the time okay what am i doing with this letter okay Sirosh, i will i will ask you again one more time yeah like more concrete okay conversations with with the objective of what what do you want to achieve yes with this conversation so from this function what am i doing right now Am I telling my mom how my life is going if I'm writing my, uh, a letter to my mom? Or if I am writing the report about the results of my own research, for example, yes? You start with the function and this is how it works with the structure. If you know what you are doing, if it's not just okay i need to write something yeah I, I have these days sometimes yeah i need to write something okay so i understand what i'm going to do and this is going to be structurally relevant first of all my understanding and then how it works so i will show you a very typical example of the structural mistake so the person was asked to write an essay 
what are the advantages of having friends who are different from you and why? Okay, so the second to think about the task. What are the advantages of having friends who are different from you? Okay, so, and it's not my mistake about presentations. Uh, you see this text, yeah, like it's, 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 it's long, it's like very, very, uns like no passages and no idea, really. I mean, it's not my mistake. It is how most people see our texts, okay? So, people usually read like that. We see a passage. It's a very popular saying in Russia, rather than a hundred friends, then a hundred troubles. Okay, so this is the author style, but it doesn't matter. So, my uh, uh, question as a reader was, what are the advantages of having friends who are different from you? What are the advantages? And I read this first phrase. It's a very popular saying in Russia, rather than a hundred friends, no point. Is there an answer to my question here in this particular text? I think you know the drill. No. Okay. Do I have time to read through all this long text? I don't think so. And especially in your situation, yeah, on the slide, it is not very legible. So do we have a, a successful commun writing communication here? I don't think so. So it is not working. Okay. So, uh, and okay. Uh huh. Okay. So, and this is what happens in most of the situations, you know, like many people, and we see it all the time. Okay. Uh, we see, um, uh, <laughs> which sentence goes about the hundred troubles yeah about, like we have this famous uh, saying in russia so many uh like many people start very very far okay i like this uh for example what do you think about mcdonald's so and people answer mcdonald's is a famous networks of sandwiches Come on, guys, it's not my question, yes? I am not asking you what uh, uh, what McDonald's is, but I am asking you what, what do you think, okay? But we often start far away. we like, we need to create the context. Okay, while you are creating the context, you are losing your reader, okay? You need to answer the task, the question, the function, as we discussed, previously okay so what is the functional writing here from my point of view okay i am showing that it is my opinion having friends who are not similar to you because it's it's important for people to understand what you are writing about certainly brings a lot of benefits they are does it look better to you well to me for sure because i understand what you are talking about Understand what you want to say. So I'm going to list the advantages after, like in the second uh, sentence, after the first one. And this is what will work. Yeah. Now I am ready to perceive your information. So start from your idea. It's very important. First, write the idea. Write the message which you want to say. Uh, what, which you want to say, sorry, we call it a key sentence. Until you have, uh, you haven't written your key sentence, okay, you, ha you have no text. So all your text should be, okay, should be in this one idea. If you are writing a letter, Okay, I'm sending you the results. Or, for example, I'm not sure I agree with you. And so on. This is the key sentence. When you have done it, when you have written it, and, uh, like, you will know how to structure the rest of the text. Because, because the key is you give your idea in the first sentence. Just start with the answer immediately. Don't think how to start. Don't think about the context. Start with what you want to say. All the next information in the text will be explanation why and given examples. 
but people should know your idea from the very beginning. So you remember the game, yeah? People only read the first sentence. It is called skimming. And skimming is the most popular form of, write, uh, of reading these days. So if they like your first sentence, they will uh, go further, yeah? They will continue reading. They will like your first sentence only in one case. If you tell them what you want to say from the very beginning okay i will make a little note about this professional uh, professional oriented writing for example again coming back to the scientific tests texts yeah they have their outlines so you should follow some like very strict rules of structure if we are talking about highly formal scientific articles if we are talking about the letters, again, you have this basic structure, yeah, hello, and so on and so on. Generally, uh, skimming, much. I, will, I will write the word, it's skimming. So there are three types of reading, scanning, when you search for the price, for example, skimming and reading. Okay, so yes, and uh, <coughs> in this case, yeah, your first idea, you start with it first, okay? So if I look at this task again, the one which I was talking, yeah, well, it, but it's true. The, uh, the truth is always simple. Start with, like, start with the, this task. So if we look again at this uh, task we've discussed before, so what are the advantages of having friends who are different from you and why? So I write my key sentence there are two advantages alternative for you for example yeah they will tell me that i'm an idiot learning new things they will teach me something and then i will start thinking about why and i need to start from that okay i think there are advantages this and that and then you start explaining so maybe if uh, like it sounds a little bit awkward but it works if you start applying it to your own writing okay Let's have a look at another example. So you are writing a letter to a conference organizer to offer yourself as a speaker. I want to speak at a conference. I am writing, okay? I'm writing a letter. So I'm sitting there. I'm worried because ah, if I'm good enough, like, oh, come on, what will I tell them? And so on and so on. So what, am I, what is my key structure? I am Daris Terajelova. First, they need to know who I am. I want to be a speaker at your conference. This is the, the answer to their question. What do you want from me? Okay. And now I should explain to them. So you need me because now you are giving them the benefits. Okay. So I have seen the examples of letters when people started telling about the history of the conferences in the world society. And after two passages, they started talking about them uh, themselves. But it doesn't work like that. Okay? So I, this is me. If the person doesn't know who you are, what you want from the person. Like every time when I read the text, I, I have only one question. What do you want from me? Okay? And this is the function which we discussed before. So, and then now, uh, you start writing yeah you start expanding your idea depending on the on uh, your purpose and so on so let's practice okay i will ask you okay right now to think about the key sentence which will be the main idea which you will be showing if you are writing this so if you need to write a blog post about a visit to prague okay so what will be the key sentence in this case? The sense of the message, yes? Something you will start with.
Okay. And you are going to visit Prague. And I mean, what kind of message should I receive from your blog post? Okay, Masha, I'm very happy for you. You are going to Prague. I am not. I hate you. So this is the message which I'm receiving from the key sentence. Like that. By the way, if you are writing this blog post, it could be both about your plan to go or the visit which has already happened. Okay? So I really know, I know it's hard. It is hard. But if you change your mind, like we are forming, trying to form the skill at the moment, so don't be afraid. I love to visit Prague because, of course, it's wonderful, okay? I will show my own vision. I will show how I saw life in Prague. Yeah, so I will uh, just make it more precise. Okay, uh-huh. So I like this idea, actually, yeah. So if you have any more, okay, please send them because I'm going to, to read the chat again uh, and uh, we could communicate on that. Okay. Easy like that, okay? Another one. Okay, what do you need to know about Prague? Okay, and I would even go more precisely. Yeah, okay, we will come back to Prague. Okay, I'm go. Uh, yes, yes, I want to go to this country, guys. You, yes, you are getting it. It's, it, it's, it's actually very, very good. So this will be the message, and you will start with the message, and you will expand it. Okay, so let's go uh, a little bit more business-like. So if I write a letter with a job application for a position of a gardener. What will be the, the key sentence? But if I don't want to read about it, you know give you the message So what would be a key sentence for a letter of job application? Okay, okay. So uh, we will wait this and uh, I'm actually very interested in it. I want to be your gardener, by the way. I like it, yeah. I, 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 I don't just want to be some gardener. Okay, <laughs> Seriously, we will be talking about relevance in one of our third, uh, future sessions. Structure, uh, sell it to me. Okay, so any, uh, any more ideas, guys, about a gardener's position? And still, I'm inviting everybody to join in. So, like, I am very interested in, in all the opinions. And you need to participate because it is a practical training. This is how it works. Okay, give me the gardener. Okay. 
I am interested in this position. Well, that's a tricky one, actually. Um, I have this question: Why? Yeah, suddenly. Okay. And what kind of like uh, what kind of objective it is? I am interested in it. Okay. So make it practical. Make them take you. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, if we talk about this, uh, uh, how to say about this relevance, yeah, of my message, uh, like don't uh, don't forget that you it's your text. Okay. So, uh, okay. Very good. Uh, I'm good at my job. I like it. Hello, by the way. Uh, so generally, yeah. I mean, you can go any way with your own writing because about this gardener position i have two lines i could follow it all depends on my key sentence i formulate if i formulate the key sentence i want to be your gardener like it's a part of my life yes yeah? so to become your god you will be more emotional and yes we will follow this course this idea about i have loved it from my childhood you need to show your passion because you want to be uh their garden okay but there is a possible another line you can actually go in another way you can tell them you need to have me or you have to have me as it is your gardener because I am so good okay so guys like and this is another key sentence which will produce another type of letter you will be talking about professionalism because the key sentence is you need to have me but if you make it I want it's more about the passion. So you choose your line and you are very flexible. Oh, yes, I'm excellent. I'm the best gardener. So I cut these trees like in the perfect way or something like that. So the, you choose the line, but you really need to know what you are doing with this letter. Okay. So this is how the key sentences work. And it's very good practice, which helps a lot. Every time when you start writing, ask yourself, what are you doing here okay so what you what is the message the person will receive we often forget about the reader when we are writing we are inside of the process okay so like everything is about this world okay so i am writing this letter i'm i'm afraid and what the person will see like think what they should see my message okay and about this uh so just we are moving we are moving with the style what the other person will see in my message it is very important because we don't consider many factors we often don't think about some structural points which actually can harm our writing so i will give you this example send me an email please you are sending this email like you're writing this to your potential customer the person who doesn't know you at all do you think it will be acceptable like this kind of style okay okay yes 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 i love the, uh, i love your ideas by the way guys you are very very good at that and thanks for practicing everybody join us join us it's working okay and uh, coming back to my question if you are writing to a potential customer is it an acceptable phrase to use send me an email please oh, for example i don't know like give me some details or something like that okay absolutely right so, so sony is catching it here so imperative form is not polite in english yeah and we have this uh, uh, like a lot of people uh, make this mistake they think if they add please okay it will make their letter uh, their phrase more polite 
it's not true okay so you need to know this style okay and please doesn't help it's still the command come on go and do that I don't even speak to my cat like that, not to, to my potential customers. And I actually have this story to tell you about this style. So one of the companies I'm working with uh, at the moment, so they have this financial director who I have to communicate a lot. And when I just uh, uh, like started, I didn't speak uh, Polish and I spoke only uh, English and Russian, you know, well, French and Spanish doesn't count, but anyway. And so for him, he's Polish. Uh, I'm Russian, we communicate in English, okay? So he was sending me these very directive letters, like, do that, do that, you don't understand, come on, ta-ta-ta. I had this, like, I have special uh, relationships with financial directors, I was scared as hell, like, oh, come on, I'm afraid of this guy. So when we met in person, and when I was able to speak Polish well enough to understand what, what is going on, he's actually a very nice guy. He's very nice guy, but I was in conflict with him at the beginning of our communication because I couldn't accept his style because it was so direct. Okay, and he didn't mean that. He's all he's really nice guy, but like I'm I'm telling you this to demonstrate how important it is. Or oh, I'll shoot you. Yeah, absolutely right. So. People will see the, your messages in, in, in their own way, and you need to be very, very careful, yes? I mean, not to kill your impression from the very beginning, even if you are very good with the structure. So talk about the style. So we are talking about formal and informal styles in English. So, <laughs> and right now, so actually it's uh, how to say, uh, we are not talking about formal, like very, very, very highly formal. Yes, as I've mentioned, for example, scientific research, it is really a very formal language. This language is not very much used these days. Uh, if we are talking about just polite standard accepted for, for most of the industries and for most activities in the world, it's like officially it's called semi formal. But uh, uh, this is what I call formal in, uh, in my presentation. So you need to know these elements. And I am actually sending you this list of different elements of style, okay, which will be considered formal, polite, or informal, uh, 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 which, uh, which you can use like for in communication with your colleagues, for example. Okay, so let's go through them like quickly. So we have complex long sentences if you write in long sentences it will be not treated well uh if you are writing in informal style okay so informal style is very very short like it's it's very very uh, uh it's very speak, speaking style like if you are writing in informal style and by the way it it is very important both ways so what i mean if you start writing informally in a formal situation it will be like you are not a professional and you don't know these standards but in the same way if you are writing formally to somebody like colleagues or some friends of yours or whatever it will also look stupid okay so don't mix them up and so like this is my situation where i should be polite and this is the situation where I should be informal, but it's, it's very, very important. So long sentences, which we Russians like to use everywhere, it's actually a very, very big stylistical mistake, because if you're writing to an American friend, they will get stuck and lost in your long, long sentences, which you read in your long, long grammar books uh, published in the Soviet Union. They will have this kind of impression about it. Okay, so let's go on with the informal style first, okay? So short sentences, phrasal verbs, okay? To make out instead of understand, to get, uh, well, to get down instead of to come, and so on and so on. Use of personal pronouns, yeah, like it's, it's I, me, we, it's, it's, it's accepted in informal style. Contractions, so you use can't, you use don't, you use 
like all the all, all of them and if your writing is very very informal if it's for the friend or something like that uh so aimed is also uh, used i i don't recommend it maybe in in in, in any type of writing but aimed will be a uh, very how to say very strong sign of a very informal style okay pronunciational forms my own term uh so like the the forms like we speak yeah for example gonna wanna so if you write it to your potential client i promise okay modal verbs so modality it's uh, quite an emotional characteristic so, so uh, we treat it as a signature of a, an informal style so direct questions do you want to do that or not okay only for the friends only for the colleagues uh, and direct phrases with to be. So, uh, and to, just for example, this is good. This is not good. If I want to be polite, if I want to go more formal, I will use more, more non-direct phrase. Yeah, it seems to be good. It appears to be a great idea. So this will make you very, very polite and quite formal. So if you want to achieve such a result. So the elements of formal style. Longer sentences, and when you use the longer sentences, you need the text organizers. Like, moreover, as a matter of fact, and all these things, they are still used in the language, okay? Use of passive structures. Like, to every financial, IT, technical specialist who exists in this world, if you use the passive, it is not, uh, it is very, very formal, okay? So, instructions are right uh, in the passive voice. Uh, financial documents are, are written uh, in the passive voice and so on. So we never use passive for speaking, never. And we don't use passive for informal uh, style, okay? Vocabulary of Latin or Greek origin, longer words, like saying simply longer words. And people often ask me, oh, come on, how do I know if, it's, if this word is Latin? So from what I see, only the Russian speakers, guys, if the similar words exist in, in your own language, in Russian, for example, discuss, discutirovat. So it is very likely to be very old, Latin or Greek. And this will be the uh, signature of formal style. Okay, so no ending the sentence with prepositions, use of whom, we never use whom in speaking and informal writing these days, indirect questions, okay, do you want it or not, was informal, so could you tell me if you want it, so this will be more polite of course, yeah, and be non-direct as I, uh, I've already mentioned, uh, so I will repeat, uh, I have made this style guide for you because i want you to practice i want to you to learn how to do that so you will receive this list of elements uh in your emails after the webinar and also i have created some kind of a table of different vocabulary equivalents yeah for example to demonstrate to show yeah like how to to write it more formally and how to write it more informally uh so i hope it will help for your own practice and try to use it and of course try to practice to switch these styles which is also very important so now i have this uh, question to ask you so is this phrase formal or informal to you like what style is here <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, waiting, waiting for the answers. Okay, okay. Irma, you are cheating. You are an English teacher. You can't be the first to answer. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, what about the this one? It has been proven that the argument so far without foundation. My favorite one. I often read something like that in, in, in my friends' letters. Formal, of course. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So what about our wonderful uh, form? Yes, 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 yes. Of course, passive. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so and for the next answers, please put the number of the sentence because I am actually right now getting lost. Yes, okay. So, for example, two formal, first informal, or something like that. So, it has been proving that the argument so far without hesitation uh, foundation. Of course, it is formal. It is formal. We have the passive here, we have the complex sentence, we have uh, without foundation, yes, it's just such a long, very long and very hard to read uh, the sentence, okay? But, of course, uh, actually, if we read some lawyer's documents, you have to use the language like that to look professional, for example. Okay, uh, what about the last one? So now it will be like uh, free, yes, uh, sentence number three. We'll finish the job next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please don't forget uh, to put the number uh, over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, free informal, of course, yes. So how do we know it is informal? Yes, so we have the apostrophe, we have a contraction, it is uh, a very, uh, like, very short words, very short phrase, and so on and so on. So, yes, you need to understand what style uh, 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 you are writing in, and we need to understand, okay, so how to work with these styles. So, please, uh, let, let's do this example. So, now I want you to change this phrase into another style. So, as you can see, it is very, very formal. Can you write me an informal variant, please? Okay. Okay, Siroj, now I, I, I see some constructive work, not only jokes. Okay, so make it sound like a normal human speech. Mm hmm okay okay i like it i like this personalization if you need my help Irma, it's actually very good yeah okay please write us sif okay if uh-huh so you've shortened the construction and uh now it will uh it will look uh more uh informal and more similar to uh speaking style yeah okay i will not be torturing you with this uh uh with this longer sentences anymore so i will call you later today let's do it vice versa now let's turn it into more formal style And by the way, I love your answers and thank you very much for all your active work. I mean, people who are typing now, they are training. And next time, I hope that more people will join to the chat. Okay, okay, very good. Uh-huh, I like it. Mm -hmm. So, how would you make it more polite to the person who doesn't know you about this particular phrase? I will call you later today. Mm -hmm.
okay. are going to be contacted with later. So we have distanced ourselves very, very much. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So there will be, yes, of course, uh, if we talk about these tiles, there will be several steps. Okay. So just, it can be just a bit polite, uh, more polite, just very distant, and so on. Uh, by the way, for those who are, read, uh, who are reading, Irma's variant is really very distant, uh, distance, very formal. Okay, okay. Uh, Lena, I would change it uh, to get back, okay? So I'm going to get back to you later today, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, any other variants? Okay. Okay, well, Sirosa, now you are killing it. How could I call? Okay, a little bit later today. Okay, yeah, get back. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I would also uh, add, for example, something due, uh, later during the day. Maybe it will be more uh, uh, a bit more formal equivalent. Uh, uh, so just if you compare to, to just what today. Okay, uh, so for example the last one so skip the second one please so the third one go to our website and write us so how could we make it softer how could we make it more polite the last one okay so uh, my favorite imperatives. I, I really have to do so much work with imperatives because it, it's, I don't know, it's a feature of our Russian writing style. Okay. And I'm still waiting for more people to join in to participate mm -hmm. now any ideas about the third sentence okay uh-huh you can find our contact information and don't hesitate to write to us okay very 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 good uh-huh okay okay well guys you are sweeties yeah you're actually doing it very very good so i wish it were like more people because you really need to do it so please 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 uh, practice it in the uh, in the practical way I'm sorry but I can't find the phrase so you will not start writing better if you are just reading books if you are just learning phrases you need to be practicing communicating your message and adapting it to the uh, to the needs of your readers and this is one way to do it and uh, so um, this is how we practice it Okay, so, and, uh, like, about the mistakes, people often ask me the mistakes, so uh, I will can take, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes uh, more of your time and we will be finishing. So, uh, people ask me, okay, how can I write without grammar? I will be making mistakes, Pe people will think bad about me or something like that. So, guys, there are two types of mistakes in the English language. It's also my own terminology, but it comes from practice, so I, uh, it, it actually works. There are mistakes of reputation. What do I mean here? Yes, people will maybe notice it if they know grammar better than you or if they are native speakers, but it, it also depends on the native speaker. Okay, uh, so, well, they will notice it, and you will see some examples. Yeah, it is an interesting question to ask. She speaks your language, Noel. Okay, come on. So there is some disturbance. Yeah, if you do it right, it will increase your reputation. 
If you do it wrong, there is very, very high chance that people will not even notice that they will be concentrated on the message. So uh, in this case, yes, I'm a teacher. I have to correct uh, the mistakes. I'm sorry. Uh, but there are, uh, there are also other mistakes. B, uh, <laughs> I like questions very good, sorry. OK, so uh, they will be actually crucial to the meaning of your sentence. And I call them mistakes of meaning. It is the mistakes which will kill your message, which will change the style, uh, uh, which will change the message completely. And people will don't what you mean. OK, so and for example, when I'm correcting my students writings very often, I write in the brackets. I didn't understand that. OK, what do you mean by this sentence? Or, for example, uh, I say uh, sometimes I understand because I'm also a Russian speaker, but I understand that a native speaker will not understand you. OK, so these are the mistakes of meaning. Uh, and sorry, Sonia, but it's such a wonderful example. Just I'm using it. So let's look at the sentence. Besides English, people can practice French, Spanish, Polish, and other languages there. So it is about the language exchange meeting. When I see it as a native speaker, not her English teacher, I see that. And I have two questions. Besides, English people can practice French, Spanish, Polish, and other languages there. Or besides English, people can practice French, Spanish, Polish, and other languages here. What did she mean by that? Like, I was with her at that meeting. I know what she meant. But another person, uh, especially a native speaker, wouldn't really understand what she meant. You see, it's two absolutely different messages here. And this is what we call the mistakes of meaning. And surprising statistics, guys. Most grammar mistakes are mistakes of reputation. Most of them will never kill the, your message yes i'm very sad to tell you about that because you like now my students will be telling me why are you doing this to me why are you correcting all my mistakes and i will answer because i'm working with your reputation i want you to make more money i want you to be more successful we are creating the reputation with you but in actual no but i'm a teacher yeah but in actual communication they will not spoil uh, so much to you Okay, some vocabulary mistakes, some random, uh, uh, like, and not all of them. Sometimes, yeah, of course, it is unclear if you mix up the word. And some spelling mistakes. Sometimes it's just people also, chances are people will not notice that. So mistakes of meaning, some random constructions, uh, like some grammar mistakes. For example, conditionals are crucial for your message. If you go, uh, get it not right, you will really get into trouble about conditionals. A word order, and this is very important for Russian speakers, you know that, yeah? If you mix up the word order, the person will lose your meaning. Okay, punctuation mistakes. Uh, like the example which I gave you, yeah, previously, Sonia, uh, sorry again. So it was again, uh, so it, it really killed me the message, yeah? And uh, words, combinations, and collocations, and so this spelling i hope it is ruining my reputation but it is not ruining my message okay so yeah if you don't know the the collocations how the words go together yeah you can also get in trouble my favorite uh, example of that it is when people say i made my homework no you didn't make your homework i created it for you yes you just followed my instruction and you did it okay so uh this is the thing which you need to work on you don't need most, like, of course, you need to make your language perfect. But the right column on this slide, this is your central focus if you want to write better. You need to know the structures which will ruin your message. And you need to work exclusively on that first to be sure that you are writing effectively. And then you will work with reputation. I love the reputation and I really think it is very important too. So <laughs> generally, this is it. And these are like three main things which I would like you to pay attention to. So first of all, the function you are doing, yes, you are implementing in every of your message. What do I want to do? And what does the person who will be reading it wants 
uh, want from me, okay? So the second thing, being relevant, stylistically, thematically, and so on and so on. And know, okay, the strongest points which you need to pay attention to. So we are starting to work with this. Like, because unfortunately, this information is random and it's very, very difficult for people to find it, okay, on the net. And uh, this is not, like uh, as, uh, like people say, this is not the practical, uh, the, uh, the approach which they learned the language from. So I am starting doing that because I think that this is the key to our skills. And my first block, bundle of uh, different programs which will be available for the internet, they are exactly about uh, writing skills. And I've started with punctuation because many people were complaining about their problems with punctuation. And uh, so I think everybody's heard about that, but I'm presenting my course. So first of all, we'll be teaching you how to avoid the mistakes which will ruin your message. And actually, while I was writing the course, and right now, all the content, uh, content which I have, I see that there is a lot of training uh, like that we were doing today, okay? So something about structuring your messages, uh, about formulating your messages correctly, about stylistic elements. I'm telling you all the things which you will need for good structures in this course. We have two bonus trainings already included in the syllabus about formulating the sentences and of course commas, I'm helping with commas. So if you are interested, uh, it is only the first step of a big bundle which will grow into the writing lab and I have a big plan about writing skills for the future. And uh, so I'm, I'm inviting you to, to join at this stage. So you see this red button and we are giving the uh, discount. So the usual price of the course is $95 and uh, you will get this 30% off uh, if you push the button until the 2nd of September, okay? So it will be active until the 2nd of September. And if you have any questions, any concerns, okay, about how it works, uh, is it useful and how is it working like the online learning? I, I actually have some slides to show you the principle, okay? So you have your own study room, you have uh, different uh, types of activities, videos, articles, tests, uh, I don't know. There is also a package uh, where I review your own writing, okay? So you give me your text and I'm checking it. So with any kind of question, okay? So please address me. You can uh, send me an email anytime. And also I would like to ask everybody participating in the uh, webinar today, regardless if you are doing the course or not, please send me the message about your writing pains, about any kind of pains you have with the skills and with the uh, with how to operate, how to function in English properly. Okay, so this is my contact information, the website, Twitter, Facebook, I'm online all the time. Send me messages and ask your questions and we will be improving practical skills necessary for business, for studies, for any kind of activity, okay, which you are doing in English. Okay, so this is all I want to say today. So if you have any questions, send them here or just send me an email. The link is already working, okay? So the red button is working. And uh, uh, yeah, like, I mean, if it's not working, I, I have this technical help here. So please renew the page and it, it will all be active. And uh, I will send you the replay for the webinar, okay? In case if you want to repeat or if you want to uh, to practice uh, and uh, maybe you, you want to make some notes or something like that. And I am sending you this style guide about formal and informal vocabulary and about formal and informal elements. So this is all I want to say. So send your uh, questions, please. And I am for now just waiting. Maybe somebody needs to find something out immediately. But I am done for now. Thank you very much.
Masha, thank you very much for active participation. And see you in the course, by the way, because we are already working with you on that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate it. And it, it was very, very nice working with you today. Irva, thanks for participating. It was such a joy. You have given more expertise to the program. Okay. Kissing you too. Oh, Sergey, it's wonderful. It's really wonderful. So polite. Okay. Yes, of course, as usual. Paulina, thank you very much for the participation. Okay, so for now, I don't see any any questions in particular. So just yeah, please contact me, and I uh, I hope to see you in the next programs. And we are uh, going offline at the moment. <laughs>